What's happening, Jets fans? NFL draft. Man, 10 days away. Are we going to do a mock draft? No, I physically can no longer. <laughs> We're going to do something different. There are five certified NFL draft myths that we need to bust right now. Let's not waste any time. Myth number one. I hear this all the time. Man, I would take that player at 10, but no way would I touch him at four. That's a myth. The idea that there is this huge gap in value between the Jets' fourth overall pick and 10th overall pick is a myth. Now, it's not a myth according to the Jimmy Johnson trade value chart. I get that. It may have not been a myth in drafts in recent years in other drafts. And it may not be a myth for teams who are looking to maybe trade up for one of those picks to get their top quarterback off the board. However, if the Jets sit there at four and they sit there at 10 and they draft based on needs, there's not a huge difference. There's not a huge difference because let's think about how the board's going to fall. That's part of this process. We have to predict and project what other teams are going to do to a certain extent. There's five picks between four and 10. And it is really likely that three of those picks are not positions of need for the Jets. I think you'll see two offensive linemen and one quarterback go five through nine. I think most Jets fans would agree we don't want to see offensive line or quarterback with one of our top 10 picks. So... What does that mean? It means there's essentially a two prospect difference between four and 10. Two players that will be there at four, but may not be there at 10. That's the difference. We also need to stop thinking about picks four and 10 as two separate entities. They need to be two, they need to have a symbiotic relationship, right? You know, I love analogies. Let's say you're going car shopping, you and the wife. Two big investments, like the Jets are about to make. Let's give you a nice round budget of $100,000. Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, Because I don't have $100,000 sitting in in my driveway. I don't know about you. Uh, But let's say you got hundred grand to spend on two vehicles. And am I going to say, hey, I have my my number four uh, budget over here. I'm going to take my 70 grand. You have your number 10 budget. You take your 30 grand, you go that way, I go this way. We both get the best value for that amount of money and that's it. We don't talk to each other. No, we're going to need to come away with two investments of good value that meet the needs that we have and that complement each other. So that is draft myth number one, four and 10, not so far apart, and they need to get along with each other. Draft myth number two. There's no point in taking a wide receiver in the first round. You can get a really good wide receiver in round two. And there is some truth to that. It is true that if you look at a lot of really successful wide receivers across the league, many of them were not drafted in the first round. It's also true that statistically, you're more likely to draft a Pro Bowl receiver in the second round than in the first round. However, what is misleading about that is that far more wide receivers are taken in the second round than the first round. So by the percentages, that's actually not true. And what I would say to the person who says we can take wide receiver at 35 or 38, they probably want to go defense at 10. Well, I would say the same thing to you. You can get a really good defensive player at 35 and 38. You can get a day one Stud starting linebacker safety. Christian Harris, Chad Muma, Jaquan Brisker, Dax Hill. Hill. You can get a really good defensive player there. So it's okay if we invest the number 10 pick in a wide receiver. Edge at four, two defensive starters in the second round. That's only one of your top four picks that's invested on offense. That's a really solid allocation of resources. The other part of this that's a little flawed is that 
whenever somebody names to me the wide receiver they want to take at 35 or 38, they name me a guy who may not be there. Right? Jahan Dotson. Jahan Dotson is not going to be there at 35. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. Christian Watson, maybe. Pickens, maybe. Sky Moore, maybe. There's going to be a run on receivers in the 20s. So I don't think we can afford to get cute here when we're trying to develop a young quarterback and he didn't have the weapons to succeed last year and the guy before him didn't have the weapons to succeed the previous three years. And we have unprecedented draft capital. It's okay to spend the 10th pick on a wide receiver or at the very least trade back up into the first round from 35 to ensure that you get one of the top five or six guys on your board. That's draft myth number two. Draft myth number three is that age of prospects matters significantly. We've heard a lot of this with Jermaine Johnson, who is a bit older than most prospects entering the draft. I believe he's 23. And I I mean, we're we're really gonna not take a guy because we're worried about like his third contract. I mean, l- let's think about Jermaine Johnson. So say you take him and he's 23, you have him for a four-year rookie deal, a fifth-year option, and a franchise tag. That's six years you have him. You have him for his prime, 23 to 29. Then you can either get him on a little three, four-year extension with Joe Douglas where there's an out after two or three years, and he's under contract till he's 32. And you got nine years out of him. I mean, how many draft picks have we had that don't even make it to year three? So I'm not losing my mind over that. And even if 29, he's too long in the tooth to uh, extend then, you had him for six years of his prime, you paid him below market value, you let him walk, go get the bag somewhere else, and you get a comp pick coming back your way. That's no factor to me. Now, the other side of this argument, there is more validity to, because people might say, well... If he's older, maybe he's already kind of become what he is. Whereas if you draft a kid who's 20, they can grow into their man body and there's a higher ceiling there. Okay, I can see that. But the flip side of that is maybe a guy who's 23 is more pro ready and is going to give you more of a high impact on the beginning of that rookie contract and that will kind of balance out. You know, I remember the whole thing with Joe Burrow when he was coming out. It's like Joe Burrow is older than Sam Darnold. Joe Burrow is older than Sam Darnold when Sam Darnold was in the league for like three years. And it's like, yeah, he looked older than Sam Darnold. (laughs) He looked more ready to play than Sam Darnold. So that goes both ways. That's draft myth number three. Draft myth number four is this notion of drastically changing a prospect's draft grade after all the games have been played. And we've seen this with Kayvon Thibodeau. Kayvon Thibodeau, as recently as like the beginning of February, after he had played every game, was a consensus top two pick. Him and Hutchinson were like 1A and 1B. And and if the draft happened on February 1st, he'd be a top two pick, no questions asked. And everyone would agree. Everyone would agree what matters most is the game tape and your production. So to have him slide, now some people saying five, six, seven, a couple mocks out of the top 10. After all the games have been played, I just can't get into that. It just makes no sense to me. And you also see this with guys draft stock rising significantly after all the games have been played. Christian Watson, I like Christian Watson. I like him at pick 69. But Christian Watson was like a fourth round prospect after he had played every game. And then he ran really fast. And now he might go in the end of the first round. I don't get it. Because we would all say combine, you know, it doesn't matter. And Kayvon did well at the combine. So his stock is falling for basically no reason. And Christian Watson, I like him, but that's just a little too rich for me. If, you know, if he was a fourth round pick and he did well at the combine, now we bump him into the third round. Okay. 
But to raise a guy's stock multiple rounds based on how he ran in tennis shorts? Okay. That's a myth to me. That's a myth. Finally, myth number five. Somebody had to call me out on this. System fit matters when drafting in the first round. This is a myth. And somebody pointed this out in my comments in my most recent video because I was grading wide receiver prospects. And I had system fit as one of the criteria. And someone commented and said, talent is 10 times more important than system fit. And I said, you're 100% right. And if I could redo that video, I wouldn't have system fit on there at all. So thank you for keeping me accountable in the comments. If I mess up in this video, let me know. I'll do better next time. And this is so true. This is so true because then I started thinking, I'm like, okay, if you're, especially for the Jets, the Jets are picking in the top 10. If you're picking a guy in the top 10, you want an elite player. You want an all pro caliber, caliber player. If you don't get an all pro caliber player at four or at 10, kind of a disappointment. And I was thinking, I was like, is there a single all pro caliber player that I'm like, yeah, but they wouldn't work in this system. I couldn't think of one. If you could think of one, let me know. Like, would you say, uh, TJ Watt, he's only 252 pounds. I don't know if he'd be good on the jets because that's not prototypical size for like a four, three end. No, you'd sound crazy. Cause TJ Watt's a baller. If uh, we needed a Mike linebacker and you were like, oh, Darius Leonard, I don't know, 230 doesn't quite fit the bill. No, because game is game. Uh, so yeah, in the later rounds, if you're like drafting a defensive tackle in the in the fifth round and you're like, well, this guy is more of a 3-4 a defensive end or this guy's more of a 4-3 nose tackle. Yeah, okay, we can have that conversation then. But in the top, in the top 10, that elite talent will transcend scheme fit. And if you're about to take a guy and you're wondering if his talent will transcend scheme fit, you need to reevaluate that pick. So those are five NFL draft myths. If you liked this video, hit the like button. If you love this video, hit subscribe. But either way, let's go Jets.